Restoration at 12%. EXP grinding. It's something we all have to do eventually, right? Whether that's to get 100% completion on your save file, simply because you're stuck fighting a boss that you can't get past and want to get better abilities. If it's to, I don't know, just show off to your friends, or because you have nothing better to do while you wait for the latest installment in your favorite video game series. For me, that installment is Kingdom Hearts 4, and I am currently in the process of maxing out all my save files for every single Kingdom Hearts game and going for the Platinum Trophy for every single one, at least for the ones that apply because, you know, Square still hasn't given me that damn 358 over today's Raymond. Come on, Square! Anyways, uh, as you guys already know from the title of the video, these are the best grinding methods for every single Kingdom Hearts game. Let's get it. Starting off for the early grinding methods of Kingdom Hearts 1, I've been using this one in particular a lot from my Proud Mode playthrough, that is the Gizmo Shop in Traverse Town. This particular area spawns a whole lot of Shadow and Soldier Heartless in succession, so if you wipe out one wave, another one will appear over and over and over again, and you can actually go through to the hotel room and back to respawn these Heartless. It's a good way to level up pretty quickly, especially if you've already been to Olympus and got the thunder spell after training with Phil for a little bit, so yeah, I, I highly recommend this spot above most others in the early game. The one issue with the gizmo shop in Traverse Town is that you don't always get a very high amount of EXP because these enemies do only give you about 1 to 2 EXP points per kill, and that doesn't add up very very fast, especially not for late game. Uh, and so when you're trying to get past like level 20 or so, this is when I would stop using the gizmo shop and instead swap over to the tree house in Deep Jungle. When it comes to Deep Jungle, it is a little bit harder to get respawns, especially when you're just making circles. That's why the treehouse is probably my favorite, because you do get a decent number of spawns, and these Monkey Heartless do give you some decent EXP considering where you're at in the game. I would recommend just doing the treehouse, doing a full run of it, and then just jumping down to where you jumped off with Tarzan at the start of this world, and just making rounds from the tent all the way back up to the treehouse over and over and over again, until you get to a level that you're happy with. And now we get to the fun part. This is by far one of my most useful pieces of grinding information for any Kingdom Hearts game ever because I use this every single time I play Kingdom Hearts 1. So I kind of forgot to mention this, but in Kingdom Hearts 1 there are these items like the EXP bracelet and the EXP earring that give you boosts in your EXP gaining abilities. If you happen to run into one of these in your early moments of the playthrough and you're trying to grind for levels as fast as possible, I always highly recommend getting them, but as far as I know and remember, you can only ever really synthesize these at the Moogle shop, or if you're playing on beginner mode, you'll get an EXP necklace at the start of the game, and if you have one of these, then great, you're all set and you're ready to go. After equipping your thunder spells, EXP items, and slash or a lot of ethers, and your most powerful magic keyblade, you're gonna want to make your way over to the hotel in the second district. In here, you're gonna run into magician and defender type heartless, but these will only spawn if you've completed your second trip to Hollow Bastion. When you get in here, you're just gonna want to spam Thunder as much as possible. These will wipe out the defenders relatively easily, and if they don't, then just make sure you hit them in the back a lot. Uh, the Magician type Heartless are another case, they are actually immune to most magic, so I recommend instead just whacking them as hard as you can, as fast as you can so they don't despawn. And once the spawns in this room have stopped, you're just gonna want to make your way over to the red room. Or the green one doesn't really matter. If you go into the green rune first, you're just gonna want to dish out a thunder spell immediately. It's gonna wipe out all of the ghost heartless that are swarming this room with relative ease. And what you get into the red room, it's the same deal. Just throw out a thunder spell and wipe them all out. From there, you're gonna walk back out into the hallway from the red or green room, and you'll see that there is the heartless that you fought before, totally respawn, and you're just gonna repeat this process over and over and over again until you get to the level of your desire, or level 100 if you're a completionist like me. And just remember, it's important that you keep up the pattern of going through both the red and the green rooms so that the Heartless will respawn. Now moving on to Rechain of Memories, I don't really have any recommendations other than using the Teeming Darkness card on every single room that you want to grind in. Don't ever waste this card because it does become extremely useful, especially in the endgame 
game grinding methods, but if you're just trying to get a lot of EXP, the important thing is to have as many Heartless encounters in as many rooms as possible throughout the course of however long you need until you get to a point where you can no longer progress because a boss is too difficult or you're just stuck fighting a certain number of Heartless. Now when it comes to end game, there is a really really easy method, especially if you are at level 58 at this point because you can unlock a slate called Mega Flare. To activate this slate, you're just going to need a Mushu card and two fire cards, but to absolutely maximize the damage of this slate, you're going to want to have a red Nocturne enemy card because it maximizes all fire damage. As for what world I'd recommend doing this in, I'd honestly recommend either the 14th floor or Destiny Islands because these Heartless do have the most EXP given per defeat. Moving on to Riku's side of the story, there is actually a relatively easier way to grind with Riku and you can do it as early on as whenever you get his dark mode ability. I find that this method is incredibly useful, especially if you're trying to grind for that level 99 Riku trophy that you need for the platinum, because all you really need is the Lexius card, teeming darkness for maximum heartless spawns as per usual with the Sora grinding method, and you need to just spin like a Beyblade in darkness mode to win. That's really it. All you have to do is press O and mash X. You're just gonna mash that and spin. It's gonna get critical hits all the time, and it's gonna maximize your damage at all turns. I highly recommend again to do this on Destiny Islands or in the Castle Oblivion level 14 rooms. So when it comes to 358 over two days grinding, as long as you're wiping out every single Heartless you come across in every single world as you play the story regularly, I think you will get along just fine. But if you're trying to go for that 100% like me, I think that there is two very good methods that you can choose from. The best first method that I came across was to simply replay the final mission. You're going to want to equip the best EXP boosting ring that you have available to you and whatever Keyblade you feel comfortable with, but preferably one that has very high damage output and not a ton of magic because magic isn't always the best in this game. And all you're going to do is go through the mission and wipe out every single Neo Shadow Heartless that you see. If you want to, you can also fight Riku at the end, although I really don't recommend it if you're using the Extreme Ring. It also doesn't really equate to really good time spending because it would be faster to just redo the whole run over and over again at least two more times than it is to fight Riku. However, if you decide to fight Riku, I recommend using a different ring that way you don't instantly die on impact whenever he uses his limit break. The other mission I'd highly recommend, and this is the one I've actually been using a lot more recently, it is to just do the Escape from Castle Oblivion mission, the one that ends with you fighting Sykes. I have found that it is really really easy to destroy Sykes with the extreme ring and that's why I recommend this method over the Riku one because you can round off all those nobody samurai dusk fights with a simple fight against Sykes that lasts mere seconds as long as you go straight into the limit break you will absolutely wreck him in mere seconds. So moving on to birth by sleep I don't have any particularly interesting early grinding methods I just really recommend just fighting as many heartless as you can find and you'll do usually pretty fine because birth by sleep isn't exactly the most difficult of games, although it can be a little unfair at times. Instead, I will be showing you guys the best grinding method in the entire game that you can access as soon as you beat Hollow Bastion for the first time. Do you remember that one area called the Reactor in Hollow Bastion where you teamed up with Terra and Aqua to fight whatever enemy that was. It looked like a guard armor, but it wasn't really. You know that place? Yeah, that is the best grinding place of all time. I know that there are other grinding areas that you can grind for different materials and such, and there are those people that will designate different spots in the game to grind for each character individually, but overall, I think this spot is good as a well-rounded grinding spot for everyone. So the first thing you're going to want to do is unlock the ability EXP chance. This ability makes it so that if you're under 25% of your HP, you will get up to double the the EXP that you would normally make. You can unlock this ability by fusing different commands together, and in order to figure out which one you need to actually do that, I've left a link to the list below. After that, you're just going to want to meld together three or four Mega Flare commands, walk into the reactor so you trigger the enemies, make sure you're under 25% of your HP, take a few steps back, and unleash a Mega Flare. Then you're just going to want to run back out, 
run back in and repeat the process over and over again, unleashing Mega Flare after Mega Flare until you get all the EXP you could ever hope for. If you wanted to boost the effect slightly more and boost the speed of it slightly more, you could also get the Victory Pose effect that you could get from the Mirage Arena, but honestly, I don't really recommend it if you don't already have it, so just stick with this. So Kingdom Hearts 2 probably has the most grinding guides out there of any one Kingdom Hearts game, so I don't want to go too in-depth on this one. Instead, I'm just going to give you the basic run down. To put it simply, you're just going to need the Goldwing Keyblade and any experience boosting abilities and items that you possibly can muster. After equipping these things, you're going to start at the save point right in front of Xemnas's recreation of Kingdom Hearts, go down these stairs out into this hallway. And here, you're just going to grind as hard as you possibly can. Lower your HP to about 25%, just like we did with Birth by Sleep, and then just go crazy. Beat up all the nobodies in this room and try your best not to die. And I know I'm not really giving the best early grind examples as of these later games, but I will just say this. If you're having trouble on any particular world, just go around slaying Heartless and Nobodies as often as you possibly can throughout your playthrough, and just keep on doing that. Grind whatever area you're stuck at, and just keep on trying. You got this. Hey there everyone, as you guys probably already realized, I still haven't played Recoded, of course I haven't, why would I? So again, this subject, this this little part of the everything of this particular thing in Kingdom Hearts it, Recoded is, is just gone, I, I don't have anything. So uh, after looking it up on the internet, according to Game FAQ, and I'd like to give a quick shout out to Nogaham, Joho, Bojo, and Ventus 12, they decided that the best grinding spot apparently is either Castle Oblivion or Olympus Coliseum, like the front of Olympus Coliseum. And uh, let's get back to the video. So for Dream Drop Distance, I actually really highly recommend just grinding out the world that never was. It's the last world, and this is a really solid example of what you can do for a lot of these games. Just grinding out the final world, going into the battle gates, or just running around fighting a bunch of the Dream Eaters is a pretty solid idea. But if you're looking for a really, truly incredible, solid, and perfect way of doing this, grinding EXP for Dream Drop Distance. I could literally not say it any better than Limit Form 72. He's a great guy, great YouTuber, highly recommend his stuff. I honestly think he's really underrated, so if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and click the link in the description. I've left a link to his video, and just show him some love. I love that guy. A lot of you guys like to complain in my last big video that I didn't really bring up 0.2, and that's because a lot of what 0.2 is can be played in Kingdom Hearts 3, although you are using a different character. But when it comes to EXP grinding in 0.2, I really didn't have much clue of what could be the best way to grind. From what I can find online and what I've tried out myself, the best place I believe you can grind out EXP, even though you really don't need it to complete the game, it would be more of just a completionist thing, would be in the Depths of Darkness area which you can be teleporting to whenever you want from any save point. Just go in there, hit him with as many shot locks and overpowered magic as you possibly can, and I wish you the best of luck. Kingdom Hearts 3. It was actually the first Kingdom Hearts game I've platinum, believe it or not, and it was also probably the easiest to platinum that I've done. But when it comes to grinding EXP, I actually got it perfectly naturally on my whole completionist playthrough of the game on critical mode. So if you're doing this whole Kingdom Hearts 3 platinum thing and you're just trying to get level 99 for the sake of it, then I would recommend just playing for the, all the other trophies and you will accrue EXP naturally. But you're not really here to hear all of that, so let me just tell you the simple and clean answer. The best way, I believe, to get the most amount of EXP, I should say, would be to just keep replaying the battle gates, specifically the ones in Olympus and in Arendelle. There's not really much of a trick or anything, I'm sure there are probably some EXP items that I'm forgetting of right now in the moment, but you can also just do the same thing you do with 0 0.2. Just go in there, hit them with everything you got and clear it as fast as possible, then just replay it again and again. And last but not least, we have Melody of Memories. This one is literally the most easy of all. Just simply equip the EXP boost item that you can get by either synthesis or just simply collecting items at the end of every track, and just replay the same tracks over and over. I don't believe there's a meta for which track gives you the most EXP, but if I had to guess, it'd probably be the one with the most notes to hit, so think of, I don't know, 13th Struggle. And there you have it. I mean, I know this video is a little bit scuffed, it's not the most well put together thing, but I have been struggling to actually find how I wanted to format this video, how exactly I want it to be executed for the longest time. This video is over one year in the making, and it's finally here. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, subscribe, like, all that stuff. Uh, as always, I've been Key, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.